And I now look to Claire Farrell to continue the case for the opposition. Thank you. Um, that's really easy to follow. <laughs> um, I did a debate quite recently where we were talking about whether or not people thought we should cancel Fashion Week and, or whether it was good for the environment or bad for young designers and, and bad for business and bad for jobs. And of course, that debate also resulted in everyone agreeing <laughs> uh, with one another, not having an argument, which I fear this may turn into. But um, as, uh, as usual with Extinction Rebellion kind of representation, and the, and the public speaking events that I do um, at the moment, I'm afraid that I bring this uh, presentation with a, a very heavy dose of grief. And um, as a room full of thinkers and hopefully some people in here who are going to assume positions of future power, I would ask us to base our assessment of hope in reality. And very simply, if you drop a cup and hope that it doesn't hit the floor, you are guaranteed to be disappointed unless you've put something there to catch it. And I think that that relates very much to the situation that we're in now. I would recommend that anybody who wants to make a change to the current status quo liberate themselves, in fact, entirely from hope and let go of it and move through away from the sort of passivity and the pacifying nature, the wishful thinking, the blind optimism and the fantasy that is the current state of hope in our future on the trajectory that we're on. And in that case, I would say that it is a powerful thing to do to go through what we've often described to people as the dark night of the soul. Face death, face your own mortality, face the insignificance of your tiny life and realize what is at stake at the moment because we are writing the future of humanity with every day of inaction that passes in the face of the climate and ecological emergency. I'd recommend that you read the worst news, that you watch the Arctic melt, that you put the graphs on your bedroom wall and that you cry yourself to sleep at night that you watch the Arctic melt away and anticipate the loss of the albedo effect that that's going to bring, and anticipate the bringing forward of multiple feedback mechanisms. Because we know that our complex systems that support life on Earth are beginning to go through a transformative process which will leave the planet looking unrecognizable by the end of this century, some think very, very much sooner than that. Our soil is dying, air pollution is estimated to kill 7 million people a year around the world, a massive loss of life and loss of pollinators, our oceans are acidifying, heating and rising. We've taken a huge gamble and we are in a position of grave risk and at the moment many climate scientists are now admitting that they can't predict with any certainty what comes. One climate scientist who we've been in touch with has begun to publicly admit that he thinks the scientific community has failed humanity, and they're his words. We're in the sixth mass extinction event, which is now being questioned whether or not that should be re-termed the first mass extermination because we don't know from the geological record that previous extinction events have been caused knowingly by sentient species, but the one that we're living now is. We know the weather won't be stable, and Christiana Figueres, famous for pushing through the Paris Climate Agreement, said that there will be no business continuity at 1.5 degrees of warming, that there will be no insurance industry, that you won't insure your basement apartment in any coastal city, and from there on, we lose all of the continuity in our lives. And some scientists believe we'll breach that in the next decade, and indeed that we'll lose the Arctic as quickly. Some people who work for the UN organising the COP climate negotiations contacted Extinction Rebellion to ask us to disrupt their event. They said they'd put it on, please would we disrupt it. So that's just for perspective to let you know 
how devastatingly badly humanity is dealing with our current situation. So what's missing, I think, are new stories that people dare to tell. When you, when you were asked if you would comply with committing to the end of the world, what did you do about that? We know that the super rich are planning their escape, building bunkers and attempting to set up biospheres and prepping for a future because they haven't believed that the economic project we're a part of can be changed to make room for the entire population of the planet. And we're missing political will, so the UK subsidises more than anyone else in Europe in fossil fuels. We voted in a melting block of ice in order to deal with our climate crisis in this country. And I'm guessing that some of the people here will be trying to imagine what it might be like in the future, to live in the future and to lead in the future. So let's look at what that might be like. People en masse burned alive in wildfires. The devastation beyond imagination. Washed away in, wild, in flash floods. Family and friends, loved ones, properties, livelihoods destroyed. Permanent drought ensuing and the displacement of hundreds of millions of people around the world. People shooting each other over access to water supplies and adults drinking out of animal troughs because there is no water available. Fortressing of rich countries by strong men leaders who say they can turn back time. And I'm afraid to tell you that all of what I just described happened in 2019. And that is the context in which we are asking ourselves to find hope. So I ask everyone to question, as has been raised, where exactly we can find hope without action. And the action that is required is on a scale of cooperation around the world, which has never, ever been seen in human history. And it requires courage. And I call for everybody everywhere to dig deep and find the courage to find your own sense of virtue, conviction, and see what it will take to give yourself the hope to carry on to try and change the trajectory that we're on. And perhaps, if you can find some, and we come together in strength enough to defeat the malaise and the cynicism which we are swimming in at the beginning of 2020, then perhaps later, at some point, we will find some hope. I'm afraid today I can't see any reason for any without very urgent action. Thank <laughs> you.